हेलो गाइज आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली की कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स दैट इज द पावर लॉन्च वर्सेज द वेव लेंथ एंड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द इक्विलिब्रियम न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर सो बोथ ऑफ दीज टॉपिक्स वी आर गोइंग टू कवर इन डिटेल इन दिस वीडियो एंड हैंस दिस वीडियो इज गोइंग टू बी रियली इंटरेस्टिंग वन एंड इन्फॉर्मेटिव वन I hope you will be staying with me till the end, and you will be getting a lot of new information. So let's start our discussion with the power launching versus the wavelength. So we all have studied about the power launching inside the optical fiber. In the previous two videos, we have talked in detail about it. So now, if I ask you a question that the power launched inside the optical fiber, does it depends upon the wavelength of the light emitted from the source so most of the people will be answering it as yes it should depend upon the wavelength of the light that i am using so the power launched or the power coupling does not depend at all upon the lambda or the wavelength of the light that i am using but it depends upon the brightness or i can say depends upon the radiance of the light so let's understand this let's prove this with the help of this video so now here i have already told you that the optical power launched into the fiber it does not depend upon the wavelength of the source but it only depends upon its brightness that is the radiance right so the number of modes that can propagate in a graded index fiber now we are going to prove this thing and for that we are going to use the number of modes and we are using the graded index fiber we all know the number of modes for the graded index fiber is given by alpha upon alpha plus 2 v square upon 2 right so where alpha is the profile parameter right we had already talked about this formula now here v is 2 pi a into na upon lambda where lambda is the wavelength of the light and a is the core radius and a is the numerical aperture right so numerical aperture is the measurement of the intensity of the light now here 2 pi a and a upon lambda is v let's put this v over here so that i'm going to get the number of modes so modes will be equal to alpha upon alpha plus 2 in the place of v i have put 2 pi a and a right so 2 pi a and a upon 2 lambda square right it was v square so v by 2 square so this is v upon 2 whole square right so in the terms of numerical aperture the number of modes will come out to be alpha upon alpha plus 2 pi a into the numerical aperture upon lambda square now we all know numerical aperture is under root 2 delta into n1 n1 is the refractive index of the core and delta is the relative refractive index right so now here i will be having a two parameter as well because this was v square upon 2 i have taken v square upon 2 square so i will be multiplying with 2 as well so now when this 2 comes inside i will be having 2 square so now i can represent m as alpha upon alpha plus 2 2 pi a and 1 upon lambda square into delta so this equations is giving me the number of modes for the graded index fiber right which is having n1 as the refractive index of the core and a is the core radius so now here a is the fiber core size and the index profile parameter is alpha now here if i see this number of modes is inversely proportional to the lambda square right so i can say mode is inversely proportional to lambda square if i increase lambda the number of modes are going to decrease so for the 1300 nanometer light i will be having lesser modes and for the 900 nanometer light i have twice as modes as the 1300 nanometer light so i will be having more number of modes if i have lesser lambda for 900 nanometer i have twice modes and for 1300 nanometer i have lesser number of modes so radiated power per unit mode is given by ps upon m the power supplied by the source 
divided by the m it is given by the radians multiplied with the source wavelength square so ps upon m can be represented as b not into lambda square so i can say ps is directly proportional to lambda square right so from here you can see if ps is directly proportional to the lambda square if i increase lambda ps is going to increase but from here i can say if i increase lambda number of modes are going to decrease if i decrease lambda ps is directly going to decrease but the number of modes are going to increase so now if i want to talk about the power per unit mode the power per unit mode would be constant if i take any wavelength the power per unit mode would be constant right if i have larger lambda for larger lambda i have lesser modes so the power per unit mode would be less and now here the sources at the different lambda but if they have identical radians they are going to launch the equal amount of power inside the fiber so i hope now you understood how i can say the power which is launched inside the fiber does not depend upon the wavelength of the light that i have used so now coming to the equilibrium numerical aperture now what is numerical aperture numerical aperture is given by this formula numerical aperture is equal to under root 2 delta n1 right so now here how we can find out the equilibrium numerical aperture we know what is the numerical aperture but what is equilibrium numerical aperture we all don't know about it right so now we all know that the properties of the light will be changing the light will be experiencing some losses when it is launched inside the fiber so what is happening i already told you about the fly led or the pig tail so fly led or the pig tail are the small 1 meter or 2 meter long optical fiber which are directly attached to the source so that the launching losses are minimized so fly led is of 1 to 2 meter length it is attached with the source to enhance the coupling of the source to the system fiber now what is left we have to launch the light or the couple of the light from one fiber to the another fiber only the coupling is left so we need to couple the light from one fiber to another fiber so i want to reduce the coupling losses and fly led should be connected to a given system fiber that has nominally identical numerical aperture right and the core diameter so if i have exactly identical numerical aperture and the core diameter the losses would be minimized but that is not possible right if i want to make numerical aperture as good as possible then what will happen only 0.1 to 1 db power is lost in the coupling which is very less and which can be avoided so what i want to do i want to make the numerical aperture identical to the fiber right the previous fiber and the new fiber will be having the identical numerical aperture they both must be having the same core radius so that the losses would be in the range 0.1 to the 1 db now where would be the power loss be happening if i couple the light from one fiber to another fiber so the excess power loss will be happening in the first tens of meters of the system fiber so why this thing is happening so now the numerical aperture is changing drastically in the first tens of the system fiber if i want to match the numerical aperture of the two fibers at the end yes at the end they will be matched but suddenly it is going to decrease so you can see this graph which is going to plot the numerical aperture decrease along the fiber length so here you can see at the 50 meter length this length is presented in the meters at the 50 meter length we are going to get the minimum numerical aperture and after that it is stabilized which is called the equilibrium numerical aperture right so as launched modes come to equilibrium condition so excess loss is caused due to the non propagating modes which are scattering out of the optical fiber so what happens because we have some modes which are propagating inside the optical fiber but there would be some non propagating modes which scatter out of the optical fiber right so in the first 10 of meter 
the non propagating mode are going to scatter out of the optical fiber and this is how the numerical aperture is affected so the surface emitting led are going to get more affected because they are getting more number of modes but if i have the fiber coupled laser they are least affected because there exist fewer non propagating fiber modes if the non propagating fiber modes are much higher then the losses would be higher so i can say in the leds i would be having higher losses than the lasers so excess power loss can be significantly larger for some of the fibers as well so first excess power loss depend upon the source for the source we have already studied that for the source it is based upon the led and the lasers for led the excess loss is more than the lasers now coming to the fibers how the losses are characterized by the different fibers with the help of the numerical aperture at the point the light is propagated inside the optical fiber here i had matched the numerical aperture so light emitting area of the led is if it is less than the cross sectional area of the fiber core so you can see here if i have light propagating area which is lesser than the core area of the fiber so in that case the numerical aperture will be equal to numerical aperture in so this is the na in from the graph and then we are measuring the optical power in long length after the modes have come to the equilibrium at this point the mode length are coming to the equilibrium and the numerical aperture when it is calculated at this point it is found to be very less than the na in so this is called the na equilibrium which is the equilibrium numerical aperture so i have studied that in the first tens or 50s of meters of the optical fiber the numerical aperture is decreasing significantly which is going to cause some mode losses or the non propagating modes are scattered out with the help of this mechanism right which is undesirable and from here i can calculate the equivalent power as well so the equilibrium power is p50 the power which is calculated at the 50 meter length is the p50 and it is multiplied with na equilibrium or upon na in whole square so this is how i am going to get the p equilibrium p50 was the power expected in the fiber at 50 meter point so degree of mode coupling is a function of core cladding refractive index difference so if i have a uh, different core cladding refractive index i would be having the different power coupling right i will be having different losses so on the basis of core cladding refractive index difference difference between n1 and n2 my power coupling and the mode coupling are based so i hope you understood both of these topics in a great detail if you have any doubt regarding any of the topic you can put the doubt in the comment and i will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible I hope you like this session if you like it please push the like button subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends give me your feedback as well thank you so much